Uh, good morning, everyone. As expected, only I know that only at this time, only the speakers will be there, so we can learn from our among our gels. And uh, today I will be talking about the functional structure correlation of retinal ganglion cell in glaucoma. Actually, what happened? Just like visual fields, without proper understanding of visual fields, way back 20 years back, people started. Uh, interpreting the fields. Now only just uh, OCT also without proper understanding because there are no proper books also. And uh, exactly, we do not know how to interpret uh, OCT and because there are number of uh, uh, false positives and uh, there is no proper book and we have to learn by our experience. So with all my experience, OCT for the last seven years, I made my own presentation and uh, this is the, you don't find a presentation like this. This is purely on my own experience. You don't find in any book and so far you might not have heard this type of lecture from any YouTube downloads. The most important part in glaucoma is the always evaluation of the disc. So if you don't have the correct concept of evaluating the discs and uh, you don't uh, come across to the need for asking for OCT. So the, my plan of the talk is, first I will talk about the topographic correlation of the uh, RNFL and the visual field areas and the thickness values of the ganglion cell at the macula and RNFL at the circulating, calculating circle with p-value color code. And uh, what is the role of OCT just like visual fields? What is the role of OCT in advanced glaucoma? What is the role in established place of glaucoma? What is the role in OCT in the diagnosis or glaucoma suspect? The most important thing is topographic correlation. If you see, we know that the macular fibers, suppose this is the left eye. The macular fibers, we know that it will be entering here. And uh, the temporal fibers nearer to the fovea, they don't enter here. The most important part is they enter at the, at the left eye, at the 5 o'clock position. That is important. And the, these fibers also will enter in this area. Therefore, this is a highly crowded area, and this is known as the macular vulnerable zone, that is why you will get a more upper arcade scotomas when compared to lower arcade scotomas. In addition, the fovea is placed on a lower side, therefore more crowded fibers will be there occupying and the upper fibers have more space to enter. Now we know this is the 6 o'clock, it corresponds to the peripheral fibers. And as I already told, the temporal fibers of the macula near it to the fovea, they will be entering here, the macula papillary bundle height. And if you see the, the p-value, the red appears when the thickness of both the quadrants, these quadrants around 80 microns, the red appears. And uh, more than 80, actually you can forget about the yellow, because yellow got very, very narrow range the p-value 1% to 5%. So there is a lot of overlapping of yellow with red and yellow with green. Don't give much value to the yellow. There basically there are only two, green and red. And there are a lot of overlapping on the yellow. And the normal values if RNFL, you see it is 130, 307. And there are, and on the either side this is the nasal. This is the nasal around 60 and this is actually around uh, temporal around 40, 62, 62, they are all. And, uh, and this low area will be higher. But when it reaches 80, in the lower and upper, the red appears. And when it reaches the temporal, these fibers, around 45, the red appears. It is around 35, the red appears. So you, we should know when the p-value, that means the p-value uh, less than 1%, just like visual fields. This is a very important uh, thing you should remember always. 
Whereas in macula, ganglion cell thickness, if you see the ganglion cell thickness, the it measures 5 degrees are vertically and 7 degrees horizontally. That is the area the ganglion cell thickness will be measured. And around 90, usually 95, more than 95 white will be there. And uh, up to 75, you can take for example, 75, still it is green. And between 75 to 70, it is yellow. Almost from 68, the red appears. The p-value less than 1%. So normally there is a lot of buffer because even the ganglion cell thickness normally is 4 lakhs to 12 lakhs. So sometimes in a patient there may be 80, there may be 75 and there may be 100. So we do not know exactly what is the uh, macular thickness of the patient. Now in advanced case of glaucoma you take for example the last to go is the macular papillary bundle. We see the lower temporal field is retained. The lower temporal field means it is not the nasal fibers. It is the temporal, uh, it is the macular papillary bundle that is uh, not the uh, nasal fibers of the retina. It is actually the nasal quadrant part of the macular papillary bundle. And surprisingly, if you see in the advanced case of glaucomas, the RNFL thickness in the nasal quadrant is almost normal. That means the nasal fibers are not visually important. See, in, 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 you take all advanced cases of glaucoma, you study RNFL, they will be green. So the last to go is the macular papillary bundle. And so, you see, the macular papillary bundle, even 47, 48, it got good retinal sensitivity. 48 at the macula. But originally the red started at 68. So just like a black square in the uh, uh, fields, it doesn't mean that it is absolute scotoma. Minus 10 is also black square, minus 15 is also black square, minus 20 is also black square. Like that, the 68, the retinal sensitivity will be very good. 60, it will be very good. Up to 55, you may have the relative scotomas. When it comes behind, below 50, then the, it will become absolute. See, 47, still minus 7, minus 7, it got good retinal sensitivity. When it is 43, absolute. See, 55, 55, 55. Here, See, they got uh, 14, 15, less than 8, if it is. Take for example, now what is the importance of uh, uh, OCT in advanced case of glaucoma? You, you take the th two these uh, fields, you want to go for surgery or you want to go for medical management. This is actually 72. So it got a huge buffer effect. Even if you do go for surgery, the uh, wipe off will not be there. So it helps us and both are looking similar and we, it, this patient actually requires more aggressive treatment. It almost reached 50, 62, 51 when compared to 72. So it helps us to moderate our treatment. Now what is the role of OCT in established case of glaucoma? Take for example, this is the two patients. As a fieldsman, we concentrate on the field effect. What is the depth of the field effect? What is the location, extent, and direction of progression? As a fieldsman. But as an OCT person, we concentrate on these areas. Then actually, I introduced a new terminology in this case. I call this case, this part, as the pre-perimetric part of perimetric glaucoma. It is a pre-perimetric part of perimetric glaucoma. So I want to see what are the ganglion cell thickness of this. If you see, the ganglion cell thickness is 76, 91, 102. And here it is 55, 55, 55. You see, the 55, 55 is also normal 10 to. 
confined to this area. So this patient requires more aggressive treatment and this patient may require only one, one drug. This patient requires two drugs. So OCT not only for diagnosis, it helps us to moderate and our um, the, the treatment part. Take for example this case, 7878 and and this is all because the upper part is already gone. This patient is having good retinal uh, ganglion cell thickness. No, you can tell that you are safe. Your ganglion cell thickness is very good, and you, and you need not go for two drugs or three drugs. Single drug may be enough. And here also, 80, 79, 70. Here, 68, 71. So you have to assess. What is the, the, depending on this thickness, how often you require the fields to be repeated and uh, telling the prognosis and to go for surgery, all the, the ganglion cell thickness will help us. See, this patient is more dangerous than what we have seen previously. This almost 68, 7, 68, 73. This patient actually requires more aggressive treatment than these cases. But you see, this appears to be less affected. So the OCT plays a major role for the, take for example this case, 54, 54, 61, and in no time. So what we call previously glaucoma's fast progressive and slow progressive. It is not like fast progressive and slow progressive. Because at that time, we do not know what is the GCA thickness in this patient. If you know the GCA thickness in any patient, then we can tell that if that patient is fast progressive, if you don't go for the target pressure, very low levels, or you go for surgery. Now we understood what is the role of OCT in established case of glaucomas. Then what is the role of OCT in early glaucomas? Are glaucoma suspect. Actually, this patient glaucoma suspected on the basis of IOP. The fundus looks normal and uh, almost visual feels normal, even RNFL is normal. And here, the ganglion sickness started 67. So, 67, you don't get any expect. When I talked in the GCI, I talked uh, indications of 10 2. Now I tell you, when you need not do 10 dash 2, when the GCA thickness is more than 60, you need not do 10 dash 2 because even if you do 10 dash 2, it will come normal. See the same, the other eye, left eye, you see the thickness. And this is another patient, glaucoma suspected actual on the basis of the disc. And uh, see, and uh, this is normal, normal, but when the purely macula, the glaucoma, because I made the, my own classification, glaucoma starting within 10 degrees, glaucoma starting outside 10 degrees, and glaucoma starting simultaneously within and outside. And this is purely glaucoma starting within 10 degrees, and it is hardly very difficult to suspect glaucoma from the disc. And if you very carefully, if you see, you may appreciate a notch. So if the glaucoma starts within 10 degrees, you appear first notch. Here, I suspected notch here and the corresponding to this area. And the water drinking test I did, it came positive. Same, glaucoma started within 10 degrees with no RNFL. And here you see there is a suspicion. This patient, there because this is the overlap uh, provision is there. This is the uh, ganglion deviation map of uh, uh, ganglion cell th th GC analysis and the deviation map of RNFL. And if they, you can overlap it, this patient, I strongly suspected, it took me for one year to start the treatment in this patient. The pressures are almost normal, but there is a strong suspicion for me the notch. So, so glaucoma starting within 10 days, only if you carefully observe the notch you may appreciate. And uh, this normal, almost normal. And if you see the overlap, pa pa this pan map analysis, and you can see beautifully the arcade. And uh, this is the, and we can tell to the patient, and it appears uh, 
I started the treatment. For that, actually, I took one year to start the treatment. This is another case within 10 degrees, almost feels normal, OCT normal. Here, there is a suspicion, and this corresponded to ganglion cell thickness. The other eye. This patient also almost looking normal and the GCA because there is no uh, D RNFL uh, the, uh, thinning, only macula. So you may not, but in this patient actually I appreciated one this uh, RNFL defect in this patient. If you carefully observe, see if you carefully observe, you may find. This patient almost they are all pressures almost normal. Uh, only the, uh, this here you, you can see some disc suspicion is there. And see the levels here in this patient, even though they are normal, once it reached 46, 59 and uh, 79, 68. Here because it is 46, 59, you see they it appeared in the visual field. And this is also seen in the visual field 24-2 and the 10-2 because this 46, the upper part is K. You can see, see how beautifully one you uh, overlap the deviation maps of uh, uh, ganglion cell thickness and the deviation map of uh, RNFL, it came normal. So, thank you. Uh, so, this is the value we have to, be, and because the only problem with OCT is uh, identification of false positives. You must have very thorough knowledge of uh, OCT, otherwise you are likely to over treat or under treat. So, most important thing is correct, uh, the understanding of OCT printouts is very, very important. Thank you.